You just survived the worst day at work. Back-to-back -back meetings, a passive-aggressive email from your boss, traffic that made you question every life choice. And now, you're standing in your kitchen demolishing a sleeve of Oreos at 9 p.m. Ever wonder why that same cookie tastes like heaven in the moment, but makes you feel like absolute garbage an hour later? Today, I'll explain why stress makes sugar hit 10 times harder like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand why your body treats dessert like a threat when you're burned out, and what to actually do about it. Here's what's actually happening inside your body during that stressful day. Before you even touch that cookie, cortisol already flooded your bloodstream with sugar. That's your stress hormone doing its job, preparing you for danger by dumping glucose into your system. Your body doesn't know the difference between a predator and a Zoom call that could have been an email. It just knows you're stressed, so it releases fuel. Your blood sugar spikes before you've eaten a single thing. You're already starting from a place your body considers an emergency. Studies show that chronic stress can raise baseline blood sugar by 20 to 30% before you take a single bite of food. That means if your normal fasting blood sugar is 90, stress alone can push it to over 115 without any food involved whatsoever. Now imagine your blood sugar is like a bathtub that's already half full. Cortisol filled it up while you were sitting in traffic cursing at the GPS. Then you eat sugar, actual cookies, candy, that frappuccino with more syrup than coffee. Now you're dumping buckets of water into a tub that's already close to overflowing. Your pancreas sees this and panics. It releases insulin to bring everything back down, but it has to release way more than usual. You're not starting from zero. You're starting from chaos. That's why the crash feels so brutal. That's why you're shaky and foggy and somehow hungrier than before you ate anything. Your insulin overcompensates because it's trying to manage what feels like a crisis, not a normal meal. Here's where it gets wild. This explains why stress eaters feel punished by the exact food they reached for to feel better. You're not weak. You're not failing at self-control. Your body is responding to a chemical storm you didn't even know was brewing. When you're calm and rested, eating sugar is like adding a log to a small fire. Your body handles it without freaking out. But when you're stressed, it's like throwing gasoline on a fire that's already raging. Same sugar, completely different reaction. That cookie during a Netflix binge on a lazy Sunday? Your body processes it fine. That same cookie after a terrible day and four hours of sleep? Complete chaos. The difference isn't the food, it's the state your body was already in. It's the biochemical context that makes all the difference. This matters to you because we've all been told willpower is the answer. Just eat less sugar. Just say no. Just have more discipline. But nobody explained that your stress got there first and set your body up to fail. It's like trying to have a calm conversation while someone's blasting an air horn next to your head. Sure, you could try harder to focus. Or you could turn off the air horn first. Cortisol is the air horn. It's raising your baseline blood sugar, priming your system for a crash. Every dietary choice you make becomes 10 times harder to manage. You're not starting from a level playing field. You're starting from a place where your body is already in crisis mode before breakfast. No amount of willpower can override a hormonal disaster that started hours before you made any food choices. Now check this out. Cortisol follows a daily pattern. It's naturally highest in the morning to wake you up. It's supposed to drop at night so you can sleep. But chronic stress, bad sleep, or eating sugar late at night breaks that pattern. When you eat sugar at night, you're spiking insulin right when cortisol is trying to reset. It's like trying to reboot your computer while also downloading 50 files and streaming a movie. Everything glitches. Your sleep quality tanks because insulin and cortisol are fighting each other. You wake up groggy with elevated cortisol that never properly reset overnight, and the cycle repeats. That late night ice cream isn't just a bad choice, it's actively sabotaging tomorrow before tomorrow even starts. This is why people who eat sugary snacks after 8 p.m. report 40% worse sleep quality on average. They're disrupting the natural cortisol decline that needs to happen for restorative sleep. The fix isn't to swear off sugar forever or hate yourself every time you want dessert. It's to stabilize cortisol first so your body isn't already in panic mode when you eat. Start with sleep. Even one extra hour makes a massive difference in how your body handles glucose the next day. Research shows that sleeping six hours instead of five reduces your insulin resistance by nearly 20%. It's like the difference between driving on a smooth road versus one full of potholes. You'll get there either way, but one destroys your car in the process. Front load protein in the morning, 
Give your body building blocks that don't spike insulin. This means you're not riding a blood sugar roller coaster from the moment you wake up. And if you're going to have sugar, do it in a low stress window, not at midnight after doom scrolling. Think of it as strategic timing rather than restriction. Here's what you need to understand. Timing matters more than you think. Sugar after a workout when your muscles are hungry for fuel, your body uses it efficiently because cortisol is lower and insulin sensitivity is higher. Sugar after a good night's sleep when cortisol is stable, you'll enjoy it without the crash. Sugar at 11 p.m. after the worst day of your life on three hours of sleep, you're basically asking your body to choose violence. Same food, wildly different outcomes. It's like texting your ex when you're happy and stable versus texting them at 2 a.m. after wine. The action is the same, but the context determines whether it's fine or a complete disaster. Your body works the exact same way with food. Some people are figuring this out and changing the order of operations. Instead of fighting cravings with willpower, they're managing stress first. Morning sunlight to anchor cortisol rhythms and signal to your body that it's time to wake up properly. Magnesium before bed to support sleep and calm the nervous system. Cutting off screens an hour before sleep so cortisol actually drops at night. Walking after meals to blunt blood sugar spikes without needing intense exercise. Just 10 minutes of walking after eating can reduce blood sugar spikes by up to 30%. These aren't Instagram wellness trends. They're small adjustments that change the baseline your body is operating from. You still get to enjoy food. You just stop setting yourself up for a crash every single time. These changes address the root cause instead of fighting symptoms. The system we're living in doesn't make this easy though. You're expected to work long hours under constant pressure. Sleep less than you need answer emails at all hours, and somehow also have perfect discipline around food. That's not a reasonable ask. That's a recipe for exactly the chaos you're experiencing. Your body is responding to the signals it's receiving. Chronic stress, poor sleep, no downtime. Then we blame the cookie like it's the villain. The cookie isn't the problem. The environment that made your cortisol spike for eight straight hours is the problem. Fix the signal and the response changes. We're trying to solve a systemic problem with individual willpower and it's not working. Here's where we are. Cortisol raises your blood sugar before you eat anything. Adding sugar on top makes insulin spike way higher than it would on a calm day. That's why stress eaters crash harder and feel worse afterward. It's not the food. It's the storm that was already brewing. Timing sugar around lower stress windows reduces the damage significantly. Nighttime sugar disrupts cortisol's natural reset and sabotages your sleep. Stabilizing cortisol first through sleep, protein, and stress management makes every dietary choice easier. You're not starting from crisis mode anymore. So here's the real question. Are we going to keep blaming ourselves for lacking willpower? Or are we finally going to acknowledge that the stress we're under matters just as much as what's on our plate?